Hello guys, every good name is taken here and welcome to another video and today we got a Patreon requested review of the Cromwell and um, it is from Paimon who also sent in this replay so shout out to you mate and thanks for the support and today we have the Cromwell and um, this is not into my review series this is completely different this has been requested via the Patreon um, benefits, so please don't get confused. Today we're going to be comparing the Cromwell to its premium counterpart, the Cromwell B, and see if this tank is still worth playing and how good it can actually be. So why don't we just go ahead and jump straight into it. With him playing on canal here, we're going to have a look at the statistics. And they will be quite interesting. So the Cromwell has um, a 75mm uh, gun, so 160 alpha damage, with the pretty standard 4.8 seconds reload on tier 6 mediums. Um, nothing too surprising there, giving it an exact DPM of 2000. Um, this tank has. The exact same gun stats as the Cromwell B in that regard for DPM, penetration and reload time. You got a meh shell velocity of 780 as it is AP only. The shell is not flying too quickly so sniping can be a bit rough at times. You have um, 145 millimeters of AP penetration. So it's not too good, not too bad either though, you gotta be a bit more careful with where you're aiming at. For APCI you get 202 millimeters of penetration, so you're definitely gonna pen everything you meet. If you dab that 2 key, you um, also drop your alpha damage down to 137, F35. And if you decide to use the HE, um, which both Paimon and I carry a bit of, then um, you will have 38 millimeters of penetration, which will be enough for stuff like a Hellcat or a Toaster. You will get 200 alpha damage, giving you a shell increase of, or a damage increase of 20%. So it is not too bad there. You got an aim time of roughly 2.1 seconds, which is exactly the same as the Cromwell B. Your dispersion of 0.3 um, is again exactly the same. As well as your um, dispersion on the move, which is not too much, but it's not good either. And here's where the first difference comes. The Cromwell has 8 degrees of gun depression and 15 degrees of gun elevation. Giving you, you a gun arc of up and above of 23 angles and degrees of an angle. And the Cromwell B here has 13 degrees of gun depression and 20 of gun elevation. So its gun is going um, way lower and way higher, which is not good news if you um, think about this tank being a me peekaboo medium. Gun depression and gun elevation is something you really need. Um, this speed once again is exactly the same with 64 and 20 backwards. You got the same engine with 750 um, your horsepower per ton is 26, so you're gonna accelerate very quickly. And if you play the Cromwell, you will know exactly what I mean. You have quite good terrain resistances. Again, they are exactly the same. But your traverse speed is way worse than the Cromwell B. You only have 33 degrees per second compared to the 50 that the Cromwell B has. So, again... Um, this tank is worse in a regard. Uh, something also maybe of note here is that your repair cost and your credit coefficient are lower in the Cromwell. So you're gonna make more credits with the uh, Cromwell B of course. But if you enrich the Cromwell, um, you're gonna actually make more credits. And if you were to play a Cromwell B. Um, your hit points is a standard 960. If you don't use any hit point um, increase. And your armor is what I would say usually not worth talking about. But 
as there's one more difference, I will. Um, your turret armor is not a lot. You got 76, 64, and 57, which seems like a good amount of numbers. You can't really get HE'd by a lot in your turret. Um, but what you have to keep in mind is if you shoot the turret, your gunner will die very often as well as your gun. And also your commander as well is what I've noticed. And your whole on the chrome, um, sorry, and the turret for the chrome B is exactly the same. The whole for the chrome is 64, 32, 32. And here's where the difference comes. The chrome B has 64 as well, 43 on the side, and 32 on the back. Meaning that you can't get a cheat in the side in the chrome B, but could get a cheat in the side in the Cromwell um, by low um, HE pen guns basically and again your back is 32 so there is another difference there not too sure why there are these differences in the tanks um, I mean it's a premium yes but they are quite significant um, that you have better armor on the side and way better gun depression and elevation angles I'm not too sure why Wargaming decided this. I cannot tell you. I don't mind anyway. But the question stays. Is this tank worth playing? Hell yeah. It's a great tank. If you're grinding it, you're going to have a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. I'm warming up a bit. And I'm, we're going to have a live game after this replay ends. Pyman here currently in a 2v2 with Cromwell. Um, points are still ticking. But the KV-1S is getting A, so there will be a point advantage here, and they will get to 1000 points first. And um, something that not a lot of people um, would have done here, but what Pyman has decided on, is not fight this M6. Which I would have probably done. Um, but he went for the safe route. He went for a cap win here. And he did not risk losing this game. Because it could have happened. Very smart decision making here from Paimon. Um, you wouldn't see that a lot from people uh, that play this tank or overall play supremacy. He played it safe and I really respect that. And he got the AC with 3.4k damage, 2 kills, 1.2k basic speed roundabout. Not a bad game accuracy wise. It was pretty solid. It's Cromwell. It's not accurate anyway. Yeah. Also got 400 points, not too shabby for the tank. And if we have a look at the crumble here, um, how I run it, I run it with my standard setup, adrenaline and double repair kit, with double provision and the better fuel. I run a bit of everything, not too much HE though, as the pen is only 38, it's not too good. I'm using this tank here with the gun rammer. As the pen is pretty good, but I don't feel the calibrated are really worth it. You only get a slight bit more. The defense system here is the better choice in my opinion, because your crew dies a lot in this tank, what I've noticed, especially your gunner. And you need your gunner in a medium tank, especially in the one that fires quickly. So definitely go for this. The optics, standard. Then the aim time here is definitely needed. I'm going for improved assembly. I think Pyman either chose extra armor or hasn't used this at all. But if you do, I'll go for the extra HP. Armor won't do you much. Engine acceler accelerator here gives you just a little bit more of everything. I feel is probably the best choice there. And yeah, those are optional, but those are the two that I am using. And let's just go straight into the game here with the Cromwell. As I say, it's a really good tank. Um, if you have a Cromwell B, of course, there is not really a need to play this tank. Um, I'm gonna admit that. It's still a great tank though, just because there's a better version of it out there, doesn't mean that this is completely um, off the table. It's a great tank, it still performs really good. And I'd like to see it more often, really, but who knows, with the new um, British light tanks coming out, we might see more Cromwells on the battlefield, definitely more Comets, but 
we will see about that and hope that the queue time won't take too long here for us to find a battle. And we actually got one. Quite quickly, in fact. We landed on Mason Runes here, a good map for um, mediums um, that can peekaboo well. So the Cromwell here definitely a good tank. But as the Cromwell B has more gun depression, it would definitely play better here and I would rather have 13 degrees than 8. But we're not talking about the Cromwell B today, but the Cromwell. And it is still quite mobile here, we're gonna reach this position first. And let's have a look if we can spot anything with this tank. Doesn't seem to be the case currently. So the assumption has to be made that most of them went to the um, ruins area. But we have spotted two tank destroyers now. So they might be alone, but they might have support as well. We don't know yet. And I shouldn't have said. And as I said, shot in the turret is gonna kill your gunner. I think that's the case for both mediums, but I'm not too sure. I definitely noticed it a lot in playing the Cromwell. And there we go. Gunner is out of it again. You might even want to consider taking two med kits in this tank instead of two repair kits, or even drop the gun rammer entirely. And we just did to the Jagdpanzer what he did to us. We destroyed his engine twice. He killed our gunner a second time. But we are down to a one shot now. So I don't think it was a good trade that we made. And let's see if we can reposition here. In 30 seconds we have our medkit back. Or our multi-purpose in this case. Team's already dying. So that's not too good. Let's see if we get some supporting fire here. As you can see, the gun is not too accurate with a dead gunner, but you cannot expect that from any tank. Bounced another shot here. Bounced again. Really, the accuracy on this tank is suffering currently. So let's repair or heal the gunner and reposition. And um, we still would have the chance to win this. But this KB1 doesn't seem to want to participate in this game all too much. So unfortunately this will be lost, but at least um, this game is able to show the limits that this tank has. Which is its turret and definitely its gunner, which is gonna hold you back. So maybe drop a repair kit for an extra med kit. Maybe drop the adrenaline if you don't use it too much and take an extra med kit. It really is gonna help you out a lot. Trust me on that one. And let's just see if we can pump out a little bit more damage here before the end of this game. But maybe we are even able to turn it around a little bit in our favor. At least the mobility on this tank is quite nice with its um, 64 km kilometers per hour top speed and good engine power we are accelerating very quickly here on flat ground immediately up to top speed and i am just gonna run off for now fortunate there that that kv1 missed they still have a kv2 somewhere not sure as to where that is though as i i'm not sure if he even has been spotted just yet panzer 4 is still alive or 5-4 actually there is the KV-1. This probably got me spotted, so it was a misplay trying to shoot there on the move. As I'm now I'm giving away where I am. Took a shot here from the Panzer. I'm gonna put one more into him and immediately run off. Just once more. Try to put one more into him. Was able to do so successfully and 
we are able to pick him up for our second kill the issue just really being that 3485 as he is still very healthy here peaked out too far and we are gonna lose this game on a 4 to 7 score tried our best and I think it shows how much this tank can and can't do we took way too many um, shots there early on against that Jagdpanzer for I should not have traded those Gunner dying and not able to support that KV-1S then really probably lost us the game together with some misplay of my own team but overall this is um I think still a good review this tank is quite nice it's still worth to play if you want to play it I don't see a reason not to Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think about the Cromwell currently in his current state. I'd like to hear from you. Hope you enjoyed it and see you all again next time. Bye bye.